Well, good afternoon to you all. Well, my name is Rita Pontes, and I'm currently doing a master's in microelectronics and nanotechnologies engineering. First of all, I would like to share something I truly believe in. I don't know if this is common sense or if everyone shares the same opinion, but I think there's something we all agree. We always want more. So 16 gigabytes on your cell phone aren't enough? Are you telling me you only have seven megapixels on your camera? Crazy, right? Well, in this global village we live in, we have standards of living we never dreamed of. So it is crucial we keep up developing and having new ideas so we can get a healthier life, a longer and better one. And that's why we're here today. Food quality control. Every country has its own entities that approve or disapprove a certain product into the market. My question is, even if a product is approved, how sure can we be about its real quality? I mean, we go to the supermarket, we have 10 types of yogurt. What makes a yogurt better than another? Well, to understand this, we'll need to take a look at some facts. It is estimated that 550 million tons of milk and derivatives are produced every year worldwide, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. Well, roughly 86 million tons of those are produced only in the United States. So from where I see it, it is obvious the important milk industry has in the world's economy. Well, but what do we really know about milk? I mean, besides the fact it is white and tastes great with cornflakes. Well, milk is mostly composed by water. Lactose, fat, sodium, proteins, calcium. But milk also has somatic cells. Well, I'm certain most of you, like me some time ago, never heard those words. But this is quite simple to explain. Well, somatic cells are basically defense cells, neutrophils, that are in the blood. Well, when there is an infection, there is an increasing uh, the vascular permeability, allowing these cells to pass from the blood to milk. So, an animal with an infection will, ha will produce milk with a high amount of somatic cells. And since this uh, infection is due to a pathologic element, this animal will have to be treated and correctly medicated, which means more costs. Well, this disease I'm talking about is referred to as mastitis. And mastitis could be divided into categories, clinical and subclinical. Well, clinical mastitis is easily detected by the human eye because we can see clearly the region infected due to a reddish color. On the other hand, subclinical mastitis doesn't show any external signs, so it will require further analysis. What usually happens is many farmers aren't aware of di this disease due to a lack of information. So they keep producing the milk, which they believe to be top quality, but in reality may not. Well, these modifications in the milk's composition lead to changes in the enzymatic activity, and thereby the coagulation time is reduced meaning the shelf time is reduced. And this, this shelf time, this is a serious implication for the industry. Well, we're not even considering that during the infection time, the animals produce less milk. So every year around the world, mastitis is the cause to millions of losses. Well, we're facing a problem concerning industrial yields, not to mention animal health. So producers, are paid according to the milk quality, right? And this means they are paid according to the amount of somatic cells present in the milk. So if the milk has a low amount of somatic cells, well, great, producers get a lot of money. If that milk has a high amount of somatic cells, they will get less money and they can even get a penalty. And this penalty may go up to six cents per liter. So of course, all of this needs a regulation. And nowadays, in the European Union, the maximum value for this somatic cells count is 400,000 cells per milliliter. However, in the United States, this limit goes up to 750,000 cells per milliliter. Don't be scared with these values, they are acceptable. We never drank milk in our lives with less than 100 cells per milliliter, so. Anyway, last year in the United States, 
the National Milk Producers Federation presented a proposal to reduce the maximum to 400,000, just like in the European Union. Well, the National Conference for uh, Interstate Milk Shipments rejected that proposition. But anyway, despite th that rejection, we can see there's clearly a tendency to improve and control milk quality. Well, due to the importance of these somatic cells counts, there are several methods available. We can classify them as direct or indirect. Concerning the direct ones, we have a manual method where an optical microscope is used to count those marked cells one by one. We also have an electronic method where we use laser radiation, so as you can imagine, it's a bit more expensive. Another way to count somatic cells is with an indirect method, and this one is based on measuring viscosity and extrapolating the number of somatic cells present in the milk accordingly. Well, all of these methods are either expensive due to their complexity, they have extra requirements such as specialized technicians, and they can give imprecise readings because the count depends on several factors. But most important, they cannot be done directly on the spot, so you will have a long delay time until you get the results back. So I'm here today to present you the answers for these delays. The answer that gives you high resolution and precision, bringing quality to a new level. SOS. SOS is a biosensor, which means this is a device with a sensitive layer that detects and quantifies uh, physical, chemical, and biological interactions. SOS is based on a quartz crystal microbalance with a developed technology that allows to convert biological interactions into numerical values that will be shown on a display. With just a sample of one milliliter of milk, you have everything under control. Well, the nanotechnology involved gives us a more precise count with less sample quantity. And the concerns about size and portability, they are now part of the past. So sauce can easily be transported to the milking site and later plugged to a computer, giving you an all new perspective analysis of the data of the entire herd. So this device allows you to make a uh, quantitative and a qualitative analysis. And besides that, th uh, this is a versatile device because it could easily be adapted to sheep or goat milk. Well, here you can see a prototype for, of this biosensor and its specifications. Well, this is a disposable load device. So this means after every 10 usages, the load must be changed in order to guarantee the accuracy. These loads are low cost and they work as a long-term relationship with the producers. Well, we'll always have the quality issue, the optimization of processes, but we're talking about a primary need, milk. In resume, SOS allows consumers to get better milk, butter, pancakes, got their attention, butter, yogurt. So furthermore, SOS allows the producers to predict their incomes and their penalties. And one last thing, SOS protects animal health. So indirectly, we are protecting human health. Thank you for your attention.